Lighting. This is the scene in Knoxville. The crew's been working since yesterday morning to prepare Thompson Bowling Arena and the outlying parking lots to get you ready for the SEC on ESPN. And from Knoxville, it's Tennessee against the undefeated Wildcats of Kentucky. Welcome to Knoxville, everybody. Brad Nessler along with Dick Vitale. Seth Greenberg will be along in a minute. Partner, Kentucky history can be made tonight. If they win, they're 26-0. That'll be the best start in school history. What can Tennessee do to be the first team to put a blemish on their record? Well, if it's going to be magical for the Volunteers, they got to make some threes. they got to make a minimum of at least 10 threes here today. They've done that on five occasions. In fact, the one game, they made 13. If the three ball isn't falling, it could be a long, long day because Kentucky has that great length, that athleticism, they got the depth, and they are absolutely superb defensively. There's their starting five, the Harrison Twins in the backcourt, Lyles Towns and Carly Stein up front for Tennessee, Josh Richardson, Kevin Potter, Robert Hubbs the third in the backcourt of Armani Moore and Willie Carmichael up front. A very shallow Tennessee team, not a lot of depth, and of course we know about Kentucky's. The officials, Ron Gruber, Mike Nance, Doug Shouse has got it in hand. And Super Tuesday, on an icy Super Tuesday, set to begin. Kentucky actually came in here on Sunday in preparation for the ice and snow that we received here in the southeast. A lot of our crew, it took them two days to get here. So we're all happy to be here, and we hope you're nice and warm someplace watching Kentucky and Tennessee with us. Well, Tennessee will utilize that matchup zone. They have to play that matchup zone. They don't have enough size, really, to match up man-to-man. -man. They're one team in the SEC that will stay in that zone literally the entire game. They try to match up on the ball, communicate they with one another. Get it down to six on the shot clock, so they've done a good job on the opening possession. Missed shot, but a push-off underneath. Third member of our crew, Seth Greenberg, behind the benches. Coach? I was in there. Kentucky locker room prior to the game. John Calipari wants this team to be aggressive and to attack. Great pressure on the ball, force the offense to the rim, and create offense out of their defense by getting out in transition. Against that zone, they really want to get the ball to the baseline. They didn't do that, that close possession. Seth will be along with us tonight. Shannon Spake normally is, and boy, we lost on that deal, didn't we? <laughs> I'll let you say that, man. Beauty all the say. Hey, right here when you talk about Seth, talking about they want to be aggressive. They were aggressive against South Carolina. Richardson is fouled by Towns. That's two quick ones on Towns, and it sends Richardson to the free throw line. Richardson is their star, but, you know, John Calipari was talking about a killer's mentality prior to the game in South Carolina. I'm telling you, Brad, they came out right from the opening gun, and they absolutely suffocated South Carolina and wasted no time dominating. They won that one going away 77 to 43. The average margin of victory is just under 22 points for Kentucky, so that's the way their season's gone. It's really only been three or four close games, a couple of overtimes among the SEC games where they started league play. Richardson, Josh is a leading scorer at 16 a game, which is fourth in the conference, but he misses his opening free throw. You know, Richardson had an amazing moment. He goes one for 13 against Georgia. The next game he comes back, he gets 27 against Vanderbilt and sparks them in a comeback victory. They were down five with about 15 seconds to go, and they won that game in overtime. He's their best player. There's no question. Making an adjustment, playing the point guard slot. Yep. Going out of position, but at 6'6", the senior out of Edmond, Oklahoma, without a doubt, is the number one guy on the Tennessee team. Go to Luke, Harrison Kinsey. getting some pressure and almost forced a turnover. And an offensive foul on Andrew Harrison. But I Kentucky didn't... gets three quick fouls called on it. I didn't see that play there. I'll tell you that. I thought it was a block, but again, he's right there on the call. You can watch Harrison here. Defense player. I don't believe he's established. There's Armani Moore. Captains, he and Richardson are the two captains for Tennessee. And Kentucky backs off. Now Collie Stein picks up Richardson at the point. He can play anybody. He's so agile, so big. They're trying to set a screen up there for Richardson. He wants him to shoot threes. Donnie told me before the game, I want to fire about 25 threes. There's Carmichael on top. Nine on the shot clock for Tennessee. Richardson cut off at the pass and walked with it. I thought they're so good defensively. They really react really well. They give up. They're ready for this. 51.8 points a game. Second in the nation to Virginia, who was unreal defensively against Pittsburgh last night. 33.8 is what teams shoot against them. That's the best in the nation. 
it would be the best in the nation in a number of years if that holds up. 35 years, you're right, Brad. Well, Kentucky hasn't had really a good possession or a good shot yet. And Aaron Harrison will inbound to Cauley Stein. Tennessee was absolutely embarrassed on his floor here Saturday, 47 20 at the half against LSU. Aaron Harrison for three is short. A nice block out by Monty Moore to have that ball go out of bounds. So Donnie Tindall in his first year as the Vols head coach, his team will get it back with a one point lead. Two years at Southern Mississippi, very impressive there. 27 wins two years ago, 29 last year. And you see his postseason appearances over his 10 year head coaching career. They're waiting to hear what's going to happen down there in Southern Mississippi in terms of some violations, waiting for the report on that. Some people here say very optimistic that it's moving in a positive way for them. Yeah, right now, you can see the focus. Tennessee's focused in this game. They really are. Nice spin by Amari Moore. And Kentucky with its second unit in there, the second platoon, and another turnover as Booker stepped on the sideline. Sloppy play right now by Kentucky early in this game. Right now, you can see the focus and the passion is in Tennessee. I mean, they know they got to play like unreal intensity to be able to survive here against Kentucky. Kentucky's got that little bit of a swag right now. They got to get out of the swag and get a little bit passion. <laughs> as Tennessee giving it right back as Potter hit the deck. As we check in with set. Tennessee's playing their 1 1 3 zone defense, but they're flattening the thing out to keep Kentucky in front. Usually they extend those wings well past the three point line. You'll see them right now. They'll have pretty good pressure on the basketball, but they want to force Kentucky to be a jump shooting team, take away the paint, most importantly, keep them off the offensive glass. Really tough to do. Kentucky's such a great offensive rebounding team. Extra pass inside and a foul, and that will be on Richardson. That's his first. He's a guy that can't get in foul trouble for them. They can't afford to have him on the sideline. They're very limited to what they can do in a post when you look at Tennessee. It's basically perimeter-oriented, driving, slashing. Those four possessions, no field goals yet. And a little bit of foul trouble, especially with Carl Anthony Towns out with two, and that might be it for him for the first half, and he's been playing as well, if not better, than anybody on Kentucky's team. Okay, Willie Corey Stein is brilliant against South Carolina. Andrew Harrison got it from the free throw line. Kentucky's first basket. Get a little execution right there. Got the open shot. Tyler Eulis on the floor now. Put some pressure on the ball. He loves playing defense. You can see he's focused. He just picks up the tempo of the game. He's the quickest guy in Kentucky's team. Here's a runner on the inside. Doesn't go for Hubs. And uh, Kentucky just throws it away. Unforced error there. Hobbs, a five-star recruit, made a big shot against Vanderbilt to send that game into overtime. A little ice cold here, like outside. I think outside has now come into the arena. <laughs> come get your hand off him. Get your hand off him. Great one getting Tennessee the ball on the baseline. See, one thing Kentucky's done really well early, they're taking away the look at the three. Tough to get that shot off. See how they really recover? They take away the look at the three. Watch, right up on it. That was a tough looking three. And a push off underneath, trying to work for rebounding position. That's going to be on Carmichael. You don't see open threes right there by Tennessee. Kentucky reacted to the basketball really quick. Talking about reacting to the basketball. I watched some of Virginia. It's unbelievable. Ten eyes. I'll tell you, Brad, I've never seen like it. anything like it. Ten eyes focused on the basketball, and they really were unreal. Give up 15 points in the first half against Pittsburgh. The defense has been unbelievable. We're talking about Kentucky's defense being strong, but Virginia, a lot of people don't get to that 50-point plateau. Kentucky is the one three one that sets the score now to 55 points. 17 times this year. They've embarrassed teams. They've embarrassed some of the elite teams that they played early in the season. Bakari Johnson kick out, extra pass. Harrison for three, and he buries it. Nice little inside-outside action, bringing the ball to the perimeter. 
It's Andrew Harrison to give Kentucky a four-point lead. You know, you got to give him that shot. Really, you can't. If you don't give him that, you're going to get layups inside. I hope he misses it, but you got to give him an open look there because you're worried about the rebounding power to have. Pull up by Potter, and he knocks down the jumper. Kevin Potter's first basket. He's a guy capable of shooting the three. You got to get Potter to get Costello, come in, make some threes. Richardson. And there they match up. He's like, no, one, one, three. Put a big guy in each box down inside. Sorry, Johnson draws a double team back out. Andrew Harrison airmails this one to the backside. And then Tennessee loses it out of bounds. 14 48 remaining in the first half. John Calipari wasn't happy with his first five on the floor. Probably happier with number five, though, with this three-pointer to give him the lead early. Seven. Tell you one thing you mentioned, Ray Mears, what a coach he was. And he had an assistant by the name of Stu Aberdeen, who was phenomenal. And the Bernie Erie show was as good as a tandem as you'll ever find from out of New York City. What's that matchup? Lob underneath. It's a good one to Marcus Lee, and he goes over everybody. You know, Brad, I talked about a little bit earlier. Put two big guys on the low boxes inside with the one deep guy, and he, they can have a field day just throwing that lob like they did right there. Tyler Eulis, number two on this team that assists, and he's number one in the conference in assist to turnover ratio. I like it when he's on the floor. He creates so much tempo. I think people feed off him defensively. He sets the tone up on the perimeter. Other than exchanging the Harrison twins, John Calipari has stayed with his second unit, his white unit, if you will, the blue and white units in the platoon system. And he's kept one Harrison on the floor. Other than that, this is basically his second foul. Trying to drive into that lane against that size is almost impossible. If you're going to drive, you better kick it out. Somebody open on the perimeter for a three. With Aaron Harrison, he'll take a three from the baseline. Rebound to Kari Johnson. Nice hustle to take that away from Tennessee. Booker goes right back up with it and missed it. One thing if you're Tennessee, you got to hope they have one of your streaky nights shooting the ball when you're talking about Kentucky. They're capable of being very cold on given days. Tennessee wasted an opportunity with numbers on that trip as one of the Harrisons was down on the baseline on his backside, and Tennessee didn't take advantage of that. And there's a long three, but it's chased down in the corner. And now Monty Moore off the window. Nice move by Moore, very physical player. He's a guy's a swing man, playing really out of position, plays the four, plays the power forward slot, he's like 6'6". Six, six. He's not that tall. Not even that tall, <laughs> right. I said 6'5", his coach said, no, no, 6'6". Six, six. <laughs> They're both kidding each other. I like the way they match it up. I think Danny Tindall really active on that sideline. And the worst performance was that first half against LSU. Euless on a little teardrop. Right in the lane, Euless. Little floater. Yeah, he's making Josh Richardson's night a long one right now just to get it across the timeline. You know, Richardson made such an adjustment. He's never been a point guard before. He's a veteran player. He's going to pull up for three. Got it. They need that. They need the three ball. There's no way they can win here today without the three ball. Remember, we said top of the show, they're going to make 10. There's their first one. A long way to go to make nine more. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on who's taking them. Booker will try one and comes up short. Now, Aaron Harrison. That one rims out. And Tennessee with a rebound and a chance to regain the lead. Right up the three, shooter. Three. Got it. Nope. Hit the front side of the iron and out of bounds. They've had a couple of quality wins. They beat Butler, a good Butler team. They beat Arkansas. 11.42 remaining in the first half. Seth Greenberg's going to talk to John Calipari when we return. It's a 9-8 ball game. Kentucky in front. Townsend Bowling Arena where Kentucky holds a one-point lead. Think about defensive versatility. The game started, Willie Coley-Steins on Josh Richardson. First substitution, all of a sudden, Tyler Yules is on Josh Richardson. That's Kentucky's defensive versatility. But the key right now is offensive execution. 
right now. Kentucky, seven of their 12 shots are from the three-point line. Donnie Tittle's got to be a happy guy because he wants to make Kentucky a jump-shooting team. All right, well, Seth's going to continue his rivalry week road trip Thursday from Indiana with the Hoosiers host Purdue. We'll continue to provide inside access from behind the bench. And <laughs> considering considering the trip that Seth had to get here from Morgantown last night through I don't know how many places to get here, we're happy he's along with us. First 12 shots from the three-point line. What can you do to get it inside? Tell them to drive it. I keep saying, why are you settling for all threes? Game's a little rough, and, and they don't want to go in there. We're trying to post the ball. We're not. We're just not getting it in there. What can you do to pick up the pace of the game? we got to make a few shots, post it, go inside out. We'll be fine. Great. Thanks. Thanks, Seth. Thank you, Cal. Cats have only hit one of their last five field goals in the last three trips, and 0 for 3 is... Coach Carl Perry was saying from three-point land in those trips. You know what he really has going for him? He has so many weapons that he can get their attention quickly by saying, you know what, you're not going to go inside. You're going to come here to the sideline and sit next to me and be an assistant coach. Not many coaches can do that. You can't go to your bench and get what he can bring off the bench. Holly Stein hit in the back by Derek Reese. Willie Qualistein should dominate around that box inside. 7-3, so agile, quick. Dominant. They have nobody inside that can really handle him if he gets the ball in the interior. But they got to be hungry. I don't see that hunger that I saw then in Lexington and Rupp. They came out with fire. They came out with fire in their belly on the day their coach was nominated for the Hall of Fame. It's Towns, and he got the roll. Carl Anthony Towns back in there playing with two fouls. Was that Lyles? It was. Thank you for it, Lyles. Yeah, Lyles made that jump up the foul line. I mean, he was sick. He was out of the lineup for a few games. He'd been the starter when Alex Poitras went out with the injury and then battled an illness and just got back a little over a week ago. Got to be patient. Got to get a quality shot. Quality Can't shots are they're hard to come by in wow. there, but that one was quality. Carmichael. Carmichael, the ball fell right in his arms. He's had a history of foul trouble. He's been really in foul trouble a number of games. A little break there with the ball fell right in his arms. Then doubling up when the ball goes down to the post. Euless, the extra pass to Harrison. And now his brother. And they move it around the perimeter. And knocked out of bounds. Nice job defensively by Tennessee. Right now, Tennessee's winning the intensity battle. The intensity battle, the focus battle, is definitely on Tennessee's side. As the ball falls in the hands of Claire Michael and finishes and scores on the interior. Almost midway through the first half now. Tennessee. Hanging on to a one-point lead. They've got eight on the shot clock. A little different than what was here Saturday in the first half. I mean, Jordan Mickey put a show on here in the first half. Willis going to have to force one. And got it. As the shot clock expired, Tyler Eulis with his second basket of the night. Little baseline jump shot pulled up. Mid-range shot. He loves playing that ball. See, he recovers. He wants to drive him to a spot. Beat him in turn. Oh, he's got one right in the chin. I got one in the chin. Look at John Calipari. He's not a happy camper. Get it in the paint again to Carmichael. The kick out, a three-pointer goes for Buckman. Got to ring those threes, Brad Nestler. Got to ring those threes. First tie of the game, Dick Vitale. 13 apiece. That brings Thompson Bowling Arena to life. Kentucky's going to turn it up a notch. Collie Stein draws a crowd. Aaron Harrison got it wide open that open because of the ball went into the post He did a great job recognizing the double team and got it to an open shooter This time they set a oh. screen and it's gonna be a hip check and a foul on Reese That's his second foul got to communicate on those screens though. You get somebody hurt You gotta let them know much less gonna kick him back out inside outside And then Kentucky's gonna answer when the ball goes to the post as a double team on Foley Stein finds the open Harrison. Bam. That's good execution, being efficient. So Reese will sit with two fouls. That doesn't help the cost for Tennessee. As I mentioned, their lack of depth. Booker trying to get it in to Foley Stein, and he threw it away. 
Good job defensively anticipating the pass to the post. Armani Moore oh, gives it right sloppy. back to Kentucky. Sloppy. You know, Tony, Tony Tindell's getting the most out of his talent. Very limited personnel. But when you talk coach of the year, now your guys talk about coach of the year, people are going to start looking at the guy on the other sideline. You go undefeated, and you get all new players, and then you rotate them the way they are, take everybody's best hit. I'm going to tell you, John Calipari goes undefeated regular season. I don't lose any doubt he's the coach of the year. Booker into traffic to kick out to Euless for a triple. I tell one thing, Tyler, Euless has come to play. He has given them a big lift off that bench. And he's given them their biggest lead so far tonight. Up five. Here's Putter. He can shoot the ball. Nice little touch by Punter. He's not punting right now. Got to come up with some defensive stops here. Stay in that matchup. People want their matchup. It's a man-to-man -man with zone principles. You play a lot of zone principles out of it. Booker, I'm surprised he gave up that shot. Try to get a man in your area before you communicate with one another. Well, he's trying to whistle on the move. I thought he walked. I thought he walked. He got a foul before. I'm going to call a foul. It's going to be on. Carmichael, that'll be his second. Here's a guy that's given Kentucky the spark they didn't have early. Tyler Eulis, a freshman out of Ohio, knocks down a three. Tennessee's got wins over ranked teams in Butler and Arkansas. They're 6-6 six and six in their last 12, and that's the same record they have in the SEC coming in at 14 and 10 as we check in with Seth. Tennessee's done a nice job of attacking Kentucky off the dribble and getting in the lane. And the zone by shrinking the court is making Kentucky a jump shooting team. Coach, by the way, nice jacket, but the zone, <laughs> what kind of adjustments have you made with the zone for this game? Well, the biggest thing is we're doubling the post, but we're not doing a good job of cutting off the kickout pass, and now they're skipping it on the other side. And the biggest thing is we're shrinking the floor, trying to uh, pack the paint, if you will, but they're making some jump shots. Good luck. Thanks, Coach. Well, in the last few trips, Kentucky's hit their last four field goals. Tennessee's hit its last three, and now uh, Carly Stein makes his first appearance at the free throw line. You know, when you look at Tennessee, they started off with SEC action. They were four and one, four and one. They now, when you look at the last, lost five in the last seven in that SEC action, it's all the numbers. In the last four games, they've given up 52%. Got a 47% shooting threes. Tough to win when you give up those kind of numbers. Three road wins in the SEC, though, and that's been hard to do in an improved conference this year. That hey, one thing they're playing hard, they're well drilled, they're in the right place. Comes down to personnel many times too. Yeah. You gotta have talent, my friends. Well, bracketology wise, Joe lenardi has got Tennessee. If they cross their fingers a little bit with six teams in the tournament, but there's still a lot of hoops left. A lot of hoops yet. I think we're so early doing all that prediction stuff in terms of so early in the season. We'll start hearing on the bubble soon. Yep. On the bubble, like five billion times. <laughs> They're on the bubble. Are you in a bubble? <laughs> I've been on the bubble a lot. <laughs> You've been on the bubble for 35 years. That's right. <laughs> Another Tennessee turnover. But he was getting a lot of playing time. He's going to get more if he keeps hitting his shots and playing defense like he has. So I think that's a decision John Calipari's got to make. It's like getting ready for tournament action, close in. Who's going to play? Who's going to be my key guys? Bakari Johnson tried to drop step on the inside, didn't get it to go, and steps on the baseline. Team 15 Kentucky they play again against Auburn on Saturday pursuit of perfection continues if they win this one they'll take on the Auburn Tigers then we'll head west Pac-12 battle between the Wildcats and the Bruins all part of rivalry week presented by Wendy's hey one thing Bruce Pearl had this place alive yet six consecutive years to the NCAA tournament and there's no doubt that he will resurrect that program in Auburn he has that incredible personality can recruit he can go out and get players Make some mistakes. He's got to make sure that all the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed and eliminate any of those errors. Tigers have already upset some people that they weren't supposed to beat so far this year. Nice shot off the window by Robert Hubs. He came in with a big time reputation. He was a five star recruit. 
Sometimes you put a little pressure on yourself trying to live up to it. He's got to relax and just play. He had He's shoulder talented. surgery last year after starting about 12 games, and that obviously set him back. But his shot has made it a two-point game again. I'll tell you one thing, that the Tennessee has really taken the tempo where they got Kentucky playing at a very passive tempo. Andrew Harrison's three won't go. Booker underneath has it blocked. Tennessee a chance to tie or lead. Tempo so important in a game like Kentucky. Kentucky not able to get up and down the floor. Hunter a finger roll for the tie. Nice little play right there by Punter. Tempo's gonna go. Nobody got back. And Booker's fouled hard. Booker got out in front. Gonna slow get back defensively in transition, Tennessee. Defensive end, good block. I'm gonna get the ball out. Nice little drive. Looking a little finger roll, as you said, Brad. But nobody got back. On the other end, want to see about this foul now, whether or not it was a flagrant foul or not on Booker on the breakout to the basket. And they got everybody separated. Not that there were any shoving going on afterwards, but uh, both teams kept their cool and just kind of huddled up very close to one another. Here's a look at the foul on Booker. And that was Armani Moore. Moore went for the ball, though. He went for the ball. Yeah, ball oh, there was no attempt there. I think it was the landing on the cheerleader that yeah. probably hurt more than anything. But anyway, Mike Nance and uh, Doug Shaws are looking at it. Uh, replay at the scores table. I would be shocked if they called that flagrant. I thought he went for the ball. Give you another look, another angle. That's our Monty Moore number four. He gets the arm and the ball. And then, again, I feel sorry for the cheerleader. And I hope she's all right. Because that could have been an ACL over there on the baseline. As Booker had a bad landing for sure. To me, there's no doubt that he went for the basketball. Just a two-shot foul. That's a good call right there. Booker doesn't like you, but I, I, I'm with you, Dick. I, I think it was a hard foul, yes, but he had the ball. And the landing by Booker was really what made it look worse than it was. They had a flagrant foul last night in the game with Villanova and Seed Hall. That was a flagrant, and they called it. Came out of the Gibbs, see where they... Suspended for two games. Booker about the best free throw shooter around. Yeah, he can flat out shoot it. Hey, Villanova, people better keep an eye on that. You're talking about a guy that's a classy leader. Jay Wright, their club is legit. Top five of the country. Booker, the freshman. His dad was a great player at Missouri. Almost everybody's freshman when you talk about Kentucky all the that's time. That's true. There'll be another group in next year. Paul B. Gordy said, number one in the nation again. Now, they don't waste a lot of money on senior night. <laughs> And some full court pressure. Richards having a little trouble getting it in. They're not turning the ball over against any kind of Kentucky pressure. Josh is going coast to coast, oh, and that's going for the county. No pinning on Willie Carly Stone. Good call right there by Doug Shiles. Definitely the scope tenor. Got to get the ball going up and get that ball coming down. Well, John Calipari is really hot. He didn't think that was a goal tending call. Oh, uh, you got to believe he's going to think that way. Nominated for the Hall of Fame. Hope he gets in. He deserves to be in. They are playing aggressive basketball. It's hard to believe when you're watching a play this aggressive if they're down 27 at the half like they were against LSU. And they turn it over. Tennessee can take the lead if they score on this trip. And they do. Nice little transition. Hey, they got fire, man. You better draw your friends up. This got a little bit interesting here. They are not intimidated. Not Calipari didn't like this call against Willie Carly Stein on the goaltending. As you get another look at it. Anytime you directly address the lane like that, it's usually going to go that way. It was very close there. John has a legit argument, but it's going to go against you. As soon as it's across the middle of the floor like that, middle of the rim. While that one didn't actually fall through the nets, Kentucky has hit its last seven shots on an 8-2 run to have the lead over the number one team in the country. Doing a great job matching up on the ball. Making it look like an alignment is a man-to-man. -man. See how they match up? Soon as the ball comes in the area, somebody finds the ball, you got to communicate. Booker created a little space for his jump shot, but he was fouled by Imani Moore. Well, if you're a Kentucky fan, you like to see this kid going to the free throw line. Booker is really a terrific free throw shooter. 80 percent for his first two here tonight. Talking about his dad being a big star at Missouri, Melvin Booker, 
I'm sure they were broken hearted when he decided not to go to his dad's alma mater. And Brad still the number six score in Mizzou history. Interesting comments made by Donnie, T Donnie Tindall about Kentucky being probably the best team ever assembled. And you know what? Some people mock them out about that. I don't mock them out. You look at talent-wise. Name for me another team that's had nine McDonald's All-Americans. I mean, pure talent. There was talent in this anyway. But you talk about a team concept, you got to look at that Indiana team that went undefeated. They had a lot of work to do. Before they talked about as one of the great teams, you got to win the national championship. Donnie told me before the Georgia game in the locker room in Athens a week or so ago, a couple of weeks ago, he thought that he's never seen a better defensive team in Kentucky. I agree with that. And a nice follow by Tariq Owens, who doesn't play much or score much. And he's got a chance for a three-point play. I'll tell you, Tariq gets on the inside right there. Good follow-up. Not very strong physically. He's got to get his body a little stronger. But he's got good position on the weak side. There's the conversion. You know, if you're going to pull an upset, and this would be a major upset, you got to get all players that haven't done a whole lot to contribute. Right. Everybody's got to step it up. Tariq's no. got some length to him at 6'10", but he only weighs about 205 pounds. You know, talking about some of the great teams of all time. I mean, any team that had Luau Cinder on, I don't care if you had Nestle and Vital and Greenberg, and we can't play, that would be fantastic. And then you think about Kentucky 96 was terrific. With Mercer and Walker and Derek Anderson, McCarty, Dunk. Speaking of Greenberg, this is the biggest lead set right now for Tennessee. And John Calipari took out Andrew Harrison because he wasn't being aggressive enough. Said he was playing too soft, he wasn't attacking, he wasn't trying to make plays. He was empowering him, not chastising him, saying, you know what, for us to be good, you've got to be aggressive and play downhill. I'll tell you one thing, Booker's been aggressive. Good offensive rebound by Booker. You'll listen to Booker getting a lot of minutes. And we're going to have a foul down low before that shot by Hubs. That gives it back to Kentucky, but right now the number one team in the country trailing by one. All right, and then we'll see all at uh, 326 remaining in a half. 26 25 Tennessee. Kentucky's only got eight rebounds right now. Well, with three and a half minutes to go in the half. And Both. Carl Anthony Towns got those two early fouls, and he has been in the last five games. Their most efficient player, both offensively and, as you see, as a rebounder. So that's taken a big chunk out of their lineup, and he's been sitting for about uh, 15 minutes. Tell you one thing, you only had three shots in the game against South Carolina. They were able to do without him in that game. Anybody else uh, was all contributing. But you know what's really interesting? Hey, how many teams shoot 61% at this time against Kentucky? <laughs> 11 for 18, 10 of 6. Maybe two teams combined could shoot 61%. I mean, they are giving up 33% all year, number one in the nation. Right now, it's Eulis who's played the majority of this half with Andrew Harrison, Booker, Lyles, and Collie Stein on the floor for Kentucky at the three-minute mark of the half. I think John Calipari is sending a message loud and clear. If you play, and play well, you'll stay on the floor. There's a good offensive rebound well. by Booker. Missed the shot, and now it's going to be a foul from behind as Lyles is hit, I think, by Hubs. And it will be Hubs to pick up his second foul. Set. Coach Vital, you're right. Without Carl Anthony Towns, this is a different Kentucky team. Not because that Willie Collier Stein and Dakari Johnson aren't good players, but they're void of a low post scorer, a low post player they can play through. Willie Collier Stein can protect the front of the rim. Dakari Johnson runs the floor and rebounds, but they are void of anyone to stick it to on the block that can put pressure on the defense. This is a different offense without Carl Anthony Towns. Tell you what, so their defense not forcing turnovers to give them transition layups. How many transition layups have you seen Kentucky have? And the one they tried to have, Booker ended up in the cheerleading section. Lyles missed the first. Another one of the McDonald's All-Americans that's on this roster. It's loaded with him, and he missed them both. Originally committed to Indiana. Indiana-Purdue will be a heck of a matchup. Purdue really put the hurt on Indiana earlier this year. This is the best field goal percentage by far of anybody. Of course, we've still got a half and 2.53 to go. I don't think he can put a game plan better than he's done. And what is happening? Nice steal by Eulis. Nice pass. Holly Stein with a flush. That flush is big. Great play by Eulis. But I was saying, you know, Donnie Tindall, it couldn't come out any better so far, his game plan. Now the Volunteers trail by one. Richardson goes to the elbow. Missed the jumper. Kept alive by Reese. 
No way in the world he should be able to rebound in there with their size. No way in the world. That's just being aggressive. Quality shots are vital. If you don't take good shots against Kentucky, you're going to really suffer. And a blocking foul on Quality Stein on the baseline. They've always found a way, though, to make big plays. You and I had them in the roll shoe game, and they were struggling, and they're all of a sudden, the last three and a half minutes, five possessions by LSU. Kentucky just shut them down. One of the close wins this year. Well, they had one before that, too, Florida. And the struggle with Mississippi. Mm -hmm. Collie Stein gets a second quick foul called on him. Texas A&M, double overtime. Called for a trip by Ron Groover. So one guy on the bench with two, one of the big guys, the post presence that Seth's talking about, and now Collie Stein just got tangled up. I don't know that that was intentional at all, but uh, they call him for the trip, and he's going to have to sit down. I don't think I should have been following him right there. Really, with all the content that takes place. So Dakari Johnson comes back in to take his spot. It's he and Marcus Lee now, the two biggest Wildcats on the floor. Fadeaway jumper by Richardson. A rebound by Andrew Harrison. He's trying to push the tempo a little bit. It's nice when you got big guns that can rebound for you. Booker on the baseline. Booker just makes shots. He makes shots. What a look. Tindall's seen enough as his team had a three-point lead and now they trail by three. With a minute 53 now to go in the half. Coming up Wednesday Night Hoops presented by PNC. Part of Rivalry Week presented by Wendy's. All Hall of Famers. How about this? Louisville and Syracuse. Tangle, Patino and Bayheim. And then at nine... Roy Williams and Mike Krzyzewski, North Carolina and Duke at nine. I'll tell you one thing, you talk about four Hall of Famers, unreal. I've said it once and I'll say it again. The greatest rivalry in college sports. I know you can only give about Louisville, Kentucky, and it is special. But when you talk to North Carolina and Duke, it is really special because it's within the league. It's within the, within the ACC, and so many times it means so much. i tell you one thing in that game. Everybody talks Okafor, people better watch out. That backcourt of Cook and Jones, they have to be contained. Well, Mike Krzyzewski, you saw on that graphic right there, has gotten the best of the head-to-head -head competition, but he's done that against everybody else, too. He's done pretty good, I think. <laughs> I got a feeling he's had a pretty good resume. Now we got 145 remaining. Talk about a resume and a woman that worked here for years. Talk about a resume. Wow, Pat Summit, 1,098 wins. Well, the Lady Vols lost a great player, Isabel Harrison, for an ACL yeah. the other night, so we wish her the best in her rehab. We're in the top seven in the nation now. Number six. And another block shot. And Dakari Johnson picks up the loose ball. Tennessee turns it over. Booker will run it down in the corner. And have it knocked away from behind. You got to make sure you really lock it up right here. You don't want to give Kentucky that momentum going into halftime after you played such a brilliant first half. You're up three now. Got a little six-point spurt. They're going to take out Hubs and put Bachman in. This bit it's big, man. Going in the locker room psychologically, you Tennessee, you don't be down six to seven. You want to be able to go in here and feel it. Oh, oh, that's dangerous. Booker missed the three, doesn't miss too many. Got his own rebound. And again, rejected inside. Somebody got a piece of that one too, I think. Got to make sure you get a good shot here. Bring the ball back out, back it out. There goes a hurried shot, and it's a missed three, but the follow is good. Rebound. What a rebound. Just being aggressive. Being aggressive, Mr. Nesla. Wow. Wow. wow, you talking about hustle. That was big time right there. Yeah, big time hustle. I just wanted it. I just wanted to get more to your opponent. Here he comes from the offside. There's the rebound. Good timing. There's so a Devin Bachman who just came in on that exchange that I talked about on the other end. And that makes Coach Tindall look like a genius because not only did he play well on defense, he came down and scored in a chance for a three-point play that could tie it up. He's trying to earn more playing time. He had lost that run the rotation. Estella passed him up. And now that's the way you get back in the rotation. Yep. He's a junior, but a first-year player here out of Gulf Coast State College in his hometown of Bainbridge, Georgia. So Devin for the tie right here with 53 seconds left in the half. How about that? Nice game plan by Tony. 
Running big Tindo. They're doing a great job executing it. There's that matchup. Tied at 29. Booker wide open. Can't leave him alone like that. Uh, you can't allow that guy to shoot the ball. Scouting report's got to tell you, if he's wide open, you might have just count it. And now he almost came up with a steal on the other end. Positive for Kentucky has been the play of Eulis and Booker. They have really stepped up here. What a lift they've given them. And the other wide thing open. about Booker, Dick, he loves the baseline three. A lot of guys don't like that shot. He loves it. With that stroke, I think he loves any <laughs> shot. He has got some stroke. He's never met a shot he wasn't crazy about. He tucks that elbow in. Goes up the elevator. About a four-second difference on the shot clock and the game clock here to end out the first half. Extra pass underneath Owens. Rejected. And another goaltending call. This one on Dakari Johnson. No argument for John Calabria on this one. Nice little baseline pass. Tyreek now with a couple lead. big buckets, even though that one, as I said, didn't go through. That's tying his career high for Tyreek. Andrew Harrison oh, buries a three. Wasn't going to wait on that one. Four-point difference. Last shot of the half. No good. But Tennessee right there with the number one team in the country. They led by as many as three at 26-23 at the break. They trail now to top-ranked Kentucky, 35-31. Andrew Harrison, normally it's his brother Aaron that's knocking down the threes. He's got two in this half, including that one, with about five seconds to go. And it's a 35-31 lead as we head to the Mazda. Halftime report, Adnan and the gang. Good first half. Tennessee actually led by three, but Kentucky is we're just about set to start the second half with a four-point advantage, 35-31. Brad Nessler with Dick Vitale. Seth Greenberg is going to join us in a minute. I think if you told Donnie Tindall his team was going to shoot 54% against Kentucky in the first half, he'd take it, but they're still down by four. Yeah, you know, amazing. Shoot 54%, you're minus four. Great performance coming off the bench. I thought Eulis and Booker really helped Kentucky. Talk about some of the highlights. Brilliant performance by Tennessee just to hang with them. You're going to see them across them on the offensive boards right there with the offensive rebound. Did a great job. Then you can see little right here. Good offensive play again on the glass. They really were aggressive. Played with a lot of passion. And then Mulitz, I thought, was sensational. A little mid-range jumper. And that's his buddy, his sidekick. Can't leave him open, Mr. Booker. He just says, put it in the book. Booker has 11 to lead Kentucky in scoring. Their starters have 15 points. Their bench has 20. Tennessee, 20 points in the paint, and that's about all Kentucky normally gives up for an entire game. We saw in the LSU game, they scored 40 in the paint, but you sort of expected it with Martin and Mickey. Yep. Didn't expect it here with the kind of size they have. Oh, nice backdoor cut on oh. the opening possession. They're going to get three chances at this. And the third one's a charm on the side. There's no way that should happen against Kentucky on the inside. That's just being aggressive basketball. A sign of offensive rebound is that you're playing aggressive. You're hustling. You're scrapping. You and I are talking off the year here at halftime. First five minutes are going to be vital to Tennessee. Well, you have played the, almost the entire game. I think he's sending a message. Message very loud and clear. You play well, you're going to play. Here's a guy that got early foul trouble. Oh, nice Here's skip a guy pass. with a stroke on the outside. Missed this one, though. That was great execution. You got the ball in the hands of the right guy, the guy you want to shoot. Kentucky did a phenomenal job there, but just didn't score. Going for the lead there on the three-pointer by Hubs. And now Andrew Harrison works against Josh Richardson. Andrew did a pretty good job in that first half. Made some Booker's going to keep shooting. Believe that. <laughs> that thing was in. That baby was in and came out. Kentucky trying to take away the looks of the threes out of Tennessee. Armani Moore against Carly Stein. Kick out for the lead for Tennessee, and they missed back-to-back -back three pointers. He's giving the freedom. He wants him to shoot the three ball. He only made two in the first half. As Dick said an hour or so ago, ten might do it for an upset. Andrew Harrison, he'll try one. Carly Stein, the offensive blast and the flush underneath. Tough to deal with that. They gotta get some touches inside the towns down in the low boxes. Seth talked about earlier. He's such a threat down there sitting in the post.
Kentucky going to line it up tough on the perimeter, trying to take away three-point looks. Richardson only scored six in the first half. He's Tennessee's leading scorer. He may need to come to the forefront as an offensive weapon in this second half. Carly Stein broke it up, stole it. Sloppy play right there. And Booker going to be fouled by Josh Richardson down on the baseline as we check in with Seth. With Willie Collie Stein on the floor with Carl Anthony Towns. Towns gets doubled, which enables Willie Collie Stein to get to the offensive glass. Look for Cal to try to play through Willie Collie Stein, uh, play through Carl Towns. He can go inside out, but more importantly, it allows Willie Collie Stein to free himself up on the backside and rebound the ball. Here is Towns, going right back to the baseline to Booker. Patience right here by Kentucky. It's amazing. Game after game, everybody wants to be the team to beat you. They play at such a level against you. Aaron Harrison short, and who got the rebound? Yulis. Wallace got in the court, and now Booker for three and buries uh, it. He ought to thank right now Mr. Eulitz. He said, hey, I'm going to take you out for lunch tomorrow. You made that happen for him. Biggest lead of the night right now for Kentucky. This is a dangerous zone. Dick said the first five minutes were three minutes in. And Tennessee better watch it. Well, this one could get out of hand. And they're such a sport team, Kentucky. Couple steals up the other way, jams, and they got you going crazy. Hubs was the leading scorer in the first half for Tennessee with eight. Here's Richardson. And a runner. And a putter. Nice little play by putter pulling up on a jump shot. Nobody back. Call Are time. you kidding? Are you serious? Wow. There he is showing that mobility, that quickness. With the big slam dunk in transition. Really runs the floor well. A little lovely with the NBA with that kind of quickness. 24 second clock. Said one, said it again. College game should be 30 seconds. Just like the women's game is. You know what's part You can see the passion. He plays with such fire in his belly, man. He really plays hard. Richardson working against Harrison. See, Harrison matches up with him a good size. A lot of guards can't match up with Richardson. Armani Moore on the inside, rejected by Towns. And goal Nope. That was a shot clock violation, not a goal yeah, Shot clock violation right there. That's the play right on the inside. Look at him. Look at him run that floor. It's like a whiteout. Jam City. Jam City. Up, up, and away. Kentucky has its biggest lead of seven with just under 16 to go. And part of the reason is freshman Devin Booker, Dick. Yeah, Devin's really been terrific. Here he's working on the offensive board, showing some versatility. We know he can do this. Right here, Luke. Jump shot in the lane. And wow. He's an expert doing this. The trifecta. Great rotation, great follow through. I love the rotation, the backspin. All of his rebounds are offensive, and that's because he's probably missed four shots that he wanted to get a second shot at. You know, Brad, if he ever played 30, 35 minutes, they said if he played 30, 35 minutes, Booker would average 20 a game. Coach Vital, I'm not going to go there. That's between you and Cal. But <laughs> the interesting thing about Booker to me is now he understands where his shots are coming from. Earlier in the season, he struggled shooting the ball because he really didn't know where his shots were coming from. He's always shot ready. He does a great job of moving without the basketball. If he improves defensively, forget about it. He's never going to lead the team in assists. I'll tell both of you guys that much. No, when he catches the ball, you want him to shoot it. You want him to shoot it. Whistle and a foul. It's going to be on Hubs, and that is his third, and that doesn't help Tennessee's cause. As Kentucky obviously undefeated in conference play and overall. Tennessee in that upper half, and uh, the last report we had, Georgia was losing badly at halftime to South Carolina, and that's not going to bode well after what happened to him over the weekend at a loss to Auburn. Yeah, right. They were down 18 at the half against South Carolina at home. At home. Time the foul is going to be on Eulis. It's his second. Coming up next, Michigan State, Michigan. Got a text from Mr. Izzo, his buddies with him. Showed you the text, Mr. Mariucci, mm -hmm. together. Getting ready to take on the Wolverines. NFL Network versus ESPN. Those two are in the same locker room. <laughs> <laughs> the 
the C needs some offense here. Yeah, really, Kentucky locking up. Give Kentucky credit. They're really playing a lot better on the defensive side now. Aaron Harrison kicked it out of bounds. I think John got their attention when he looked at the stat sheet and talked about team shooting better than 50% against him. Josh Richardson, this is two games in a row that we've had him that he has not been what he's been all season long. Here he is against Collie Stein. Tough right there to get it over him. And the follow by Moore. That's about the third offensive rebound from the weak side. Nobody blocks out on that weak side. Armani Moore is one of the better offensive rebounds, especially for his size in the entire conference. They're going to go put a stop here if they want to start to get their fans dreaming about a possible surprise. Good spacing right here. Euless on the drive all the way on the baseline. Oh what, oh, what a nice pass inside. I don't know how he got that through traffic. Had some great eyes right there, man. He was looking all the way. Take a look at him on the way. He's going to come right in, right for the glass, for the offensive rebound. He's already feeling it. He's feeling it. Took our money a little time to get started. There he is. <laughs> what a lane he had. And the lane was wide open. Collie's down at the free throw line after that great dish underneath by Ulis. Ulis was that foul was on Carmichael, by the way, on the baseline. Ulis was thinking about it all the time. He was driving that baseline. He had eyes and vision and knew that one of the bigs would come down that lane to get in the defense. Ulis getting a rare breather. He's played most of the game. That's big if he knocks down free throws. Yeah, he was a 48% free throw shooter last year, and he's three out of four tonight. So the lead goes back to seven. Tennessee's got to avoid right now a spurt by Kentucky. They got a good defense right there by Harrison. And then the foul's going to be on Harrison. Andrew, that is. Aaron yeah. was in the vicinity as well. Andrew was pleading. He got no help from his brother, though. No. He was pleading. He was in court pleading, saying, Wow, I didn't touch him. I didn't touch him. Willie Coley Stein showing that person until they played on the perimeter defensively. He could have was guard anyway. And he has this year from point guards to the five. Here he is against Moore. Baseline jumper. That one partially blocked. Out there by Kentucky. They give it right back though. And Tennessee missed twice. And it's going back to the Cats. Have a chance right there. Donnie Tindall can't be happy with that possession. They had an opportunity at the offensive rebound to get a score. He's working that solid with a big orange jacket on. First, Mustella missed on the outside. Cauley Stein threw it right back to him. And then a foul after the shot. That was on Carmichael. So still, Kentucky with a seven point lead. Look at that size inside. Good defense to rotate to the basketball. Marcella again, and Pauly Stein sends that one in to row three. You know, that's why they are second in the nation of block shots. So, uh, Agile blocks seven shots a game. Here it is right now. Look at Willie Cauley Stein. Great timing. Willie Cauley Stein is the first Kentucky player ever to have over 200 career block shots, 100 steals, and that goes with about 600 rebounds on the way. He's had a pretty good career. Not bad. See now, right now, you got to get some screens out there, get some open looks. Spread the court. And Richardson has found it tough to score against this defense. Armani Moore, a three, kept alive and saved. Good job by Derek Reese, actually, to tip that over to Bachman. You know, Brad, they're going to need some of those threes to fall. They're coming up empty on them. And they have a foul inside on either Carly Stein or Dakari Johnson. It's going to be Johnson. Hey, one thing about Moore, he's a tough kid. Very tenacious. He's not afraid to attack. And Armani, a 63% free throw shooter, will go to the line. Four points on the night. Got a little controversy here last year. The team went to the Sweet 16. Lost a tough game to Michigan, 73-71. But that was the year that Quanzo Martin, he was really upset. They had really petitioned during the year. People and fans were not happy, and all of a sudden he gets that team to roll, and he says, "Bye, I'm going to California." Alcanza moves on, and Donnie Tindo moves in. Here in his first year, with a depleted squad due to injuries, 
That 219 trips at Southern Miss. It was 56 and 17. Did a good job also at Moorhead State at 320 in game seasons. Armani got the second of two. But the points are at a premium right now for Tennessee, and they still trail by six. Not tough for getting open. It looks like they were getting early in the first half. And they're trying to match up. Towns got to slide inside. Slide inside and walk the ball down in the post. Oh, it could, it was went for the steal. And that leaves an open shot on the baseline. Paulie Stout got the offensive rebound. They thought he climbed over the back. He's so dangerous with the offensive rebound because of that size. Trying to show some patience here. Andrew Harrison high up off the glass. Kentucky will have it on the baseline. Tough to deal with that size, man. Tough to deal with that size, Seth. Those bigs inside make it so tough for you. Those bigs do a great job of getting to the offensive glass, but Tennessee's defense is doing a great job of keeping the ball off the high post. And then when Kentucky goes down to the short corner, that weak side forwards keeping the ball off the mid post. Watch as they rotate. Watch the weak side guard really focus on keeping the ball off the high post. They do a great job of rotating. Take it away, baseline drive. Aaron Harrison gave it up. Josh Richardson can't score, but the foul is going to be good by a punter. Punter really likes to get on the glass, too. I like the way they attack the glass. They're very athletic. They just lack size. He's got some good players coming in next year. This is a huge crowd tonight, considering the weather conditions in this part of the country, and they're all on their feet right now. They're fired up. Oh, right down the gut. And a blocking foul underneath. That was a good call, no question that he fouled him. He wants to steal right here, kick it out. He's going to drive to the goal, and here comes the offensive rebound. That's good play out of class. 11.55 remaining in the ball game. Still a good one here in Knoxville. Louisville. I heard tonight that one of your players was suspended, one of your stars, Chris Jones. That's a big loss. Here it's Tennessee and Kentucky for the 218th time. Last time was Kentucky was here. It was not a happy journey back to Lexington. That's right. 2013, you probably did the game. I did. Last year was a win at Rupp. And that one was a tough game as well. The last outing was January 18th of last year, 74 to 66 at Rupp. Hey, Coach yeah. Jones came over, took a picture with us. Said, we're happy about his recruiting. Did a great job, top. 10 top five probably in recruiting actually you look at the top recruiting list depending on who you listen to and the sec's got about six teams in there but he's doing a really nice job rejuvenating the football program here in Oxford. i was on with paul feinbaum before the game and i know paul's watching right now i guarantee you alabama was ahead of that list in terms of recruiting he oh it's a bad turnover Absolutely. not that there's anything as such as a good turnover but uh just when they get it back with frustration now six I don't blame them you're frustrated when you see those kind of things happen trying to get back against the number one team undefeated Aaron Harrison makes brother Andrew run about 75 feet back to get that pass Booker three comes out a good rebound, good positioning by Derek Reese. You know, it's amazing, South Carolina, South Carolina just kept blowing out Georgia today, and really Kentucky put the suffocation on it. They're not able to really do that here with Tennessee because Tennessee's so scrappy, but they're only shooting two for 11 from the threes. Can you imagine if they made some of those threes? Estella's 0 for 4. Right now they're just having trouble getting the A shot off. Eight to shoot. Richardson with a left hand. The follow again came up short oh, by that. Owens in the third try as Derek Reese. Okay, he got an easy one right there. Reese just hanging around. The glass. Donnie Tindall now is playing cheerleader. He, yeah, he turned around to the crowd and said, everybody up. Come Let's on, go. get up, get up. Give us some lunch, man. Get us in. It'll be a whistle and a foul on Tennessee, and it'll be on punter. He wants that rocky top rowdies to get going here. 
And watch this here coming from the offside. And there it is. Falls right in the hands of Reese and he gets himself an easy deuce. Ulysses coming back in for Kentucky and Andrew Harrison sits down. Hey, competition and practice is really be keen. When you got a rotation, you got the two mm -hmm. Harrisons going every day against Ulysses and Booker. I mean, that makes it fun for a coach. When you know you got guys that are hungry, trying to get PT, playing time. That's the quickest way to get an attention of a player. Put them on the pine. Let them sit on the pine. They'll get the message. But not many can do that. But no, has that luxury for the most part. Approaching the midway point of the half. The ball hits the net as it was going to Booker. And he goes to the deck trying to get a timeout called, and he got it called. So we'll take it as well with 10.29 remaining in the ball game. Kentucky hanging on to a four-point lead. Coming out of this timeout, John Calipari is going to look to enter the basketball, get it reversed and set a flat ball screen, see if they can get some type of downhill penetration. What that does is it gives them a kick out, but more importantly, it gives them a chance to get to the offensive glass. This zone is taking Carl Anthony Towns out of the game because every time he gets a touch, they're doubling him from the top, and it's basically making him a passer. Dick, you said to me he looks disinterested in your opinion. Yeah, he doesn't look like he's really into it. I think, you know, getting doubled up is part of being a great player. I don't see him playing with the fire. And in fairness to him, as you said, I think the two fouls early basically put him in a, a little funk move. I mean, he's really not playing like I saw him earlier. And we saw him tell Shiv he was aggressive. They don't win without him. He had, if you're just joining us, had two fouls in about the opening yeah. know, a minute and a half of play, maybe. I think that put him in a sort of that state. Aaron oh, Harrison for three. Rims out. Collie Stein trying to one hand it. Everybody hits the deck. And possession arrow is going to keep it on Kentucky's end. Make sure people understand it. But I said disinterested doesn't mean he doesn't care. This is the fact that the kid got himself in foul trouble and he's simply just not into the flow. Not into the flow and the rhythm. The last Kentucky field goal was about six and a half minutes ago and it was a dunk by Cauley Stein. That's why Tennessee is hanging around here trailing by four. Yeah, because right now they're doing a good job with their defensive matchups. And as Seth said, they're taking the ball out of Towns' hands by doubling it up every time he rotates in low. You don't see Kentucky go six or seven minutes without oh. a field goal very often. Block shot inside. Now Booker from about 17 and got it. Then give that guy open looks. Eventually it's going to go down. He just has that soft touch. It's one of those guys you see him shoot the ball, you feel it's going to go in. For years, I used to feel that when I did games with Walford and Chris Mullen and Reggie Miller. Those guys shot the basketball. You just felt it was going in. That three rims out. Can't make the three. The three ball was going to be the key here for Upset City. Not falling. Holly Stein doubled. Working back out to Eulis. And now Booker is open again. That one halfway down, and the foul is going to be on Carl Anthony Towns. Tell you one thing, when he misses the ball, it's right on the lid. Booker, though, leading right now, the leading scorer with 16 with shots like this. Just splash. It'd be a nothing but nylon. Squares the shoulders really well. Gets that great rotation. Whoa, Look at this, ball. nobody back. Nobody Butch back. Jones had like that on his football team. John Calipari is going to be upset with that lack of communication. Nobody got back defensively, Brad. And again, Donnie Kendall urging the crowd out. And again, everybody stands. 48-44, less than nine to go. A little tandem there, a little double post between the two big guys. On the double up, get the ball out of his hands. Eight on the shot clock. Booker going to work. This time on the inside, and he's fouled before the slam by Carly Stein. He's really got good offensive skills. He can drive with the basketball. We know he can shoot the ball. Look at this here, breakdown. He releases as the catch, wide open. I had a funny feeling. I said, wow, he's going to drop that. He's so nervous. Couldn't believe he was that open. It was a good pass and a great catch. That's Pete Manning stepped back and through. <laughs> hey, tell Coach Jones we'll get him a paper if he'll get to the winner's circle. Yes, he will. Booker 
Again, automatic from the free throw line, seemingly. Look at Five straight through. tonight. What a great follow through. So confident. The young kids watch. He steps up on that line, tucks the elbow in, and elbow's not out. And he goes up the elevator, and look at that follow through the rotation. He's one shy of his career high, and it's a six point lead. Kentucky seems to always find a way to survive. Have another player step up, steps up big. Tennessee, 30 points in the paint. I don't know if anybody's done that to them this year. Well, we saw it with uh, Ellis Shaw. Oh, there's Andrew back. Harrison. That's big. And a flush. And the other end. That's big. You can't give away points like that to a team like Kentucky. And now it just went from being a closer game to the biggest lead of the night. Put the Wildcats. Puts more pressure on his possession. They're up eight with eight to go. And then the pass is stuffed inside. Armani Moore had it stripped by Eulis. He gets it back, though. Richardson's got to take it with four to shoot. He's been quiet. The star's been really quiet here. Oh, nice hustle by Reese to come up with a loose ball rebound. A loose ball turnover. They need one of these to go, man. They need one of them to go. Tell you what, they battle, though. They try to get loose balls, don't they? They really fight. They scrap. They get the most of their ability. But the three is coming up empty. That basket's like a little teacup, man, instead of being like the ocean. This one didn't help. Andrew oh. Harrison plays the passing lane beautifully. Goes in for the slam with 7.31 to go. All right, Adnan, the Cats here lead by eight with 7.31 remaining. Reminder for you, coming up Friday on the NBA, LeBron, John Wall, Tony Parker, and Steph Curry looking to lead their teams in the second half surge. Countdown starts at 7 o'clock. Cavs and the Wizards at 8, Spurs and the Warriors at 10.30. That's the NBA Friday on ESPN. John Speaking Wall, of the NBA, John L. Stokes is here. He had a great game against Kentucky last year. I think he had 20 and 15. He's with the Memphis Grizzlies now, but uh, he was a huge body in the post, and you could not move him. Yeah, he was really strong, very effective inside. Cavs, LeBron playing really fantastic basketball since he came back from injury. He's got them rolling. And what about Curry, man? He's automatic. He's my MVP right now. If you had to pick the MVP in the NBA, Mr. Curry. You know, when you think John Calipari over the years, when he was at UMass, he had Marcus Candy. When he was at Memphis, he had Derrick Rose. When he was here earlier with Kentucky, he had John Wall, then he had Anthony Davis. Doesn't have a superstar guy, but he's got a whole bunch of really good ones. Very good ones. <laughs> really, really good ones. Really, really, really good ones. <laughs> These good guys, people would love to have. Two on the shot clock. Eulis had to force one, and then he was fouled. They get it all the way down, play defense that well, and then Putter fouls him with about one to shoot. Well, Eulis did a great job to draw the contact here and go to the free throw line. Did they break the school record today if they win this game? 26-0 would yep. be their start, and that would surpass the team of 53-54. So you go back uh, 60, 60 years to find a team that started this strong. Well, you weren't here. I was here. Yeah, you were around. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad I can say I wasn't for once. I was the teenager, man. <laughs> Yeah, Frank Ramsey went on to play. You don't know the name Ramsey went on to play with the Celtics. Cliff Hagan, I believe, was there too. They've already surpassed the team from the mid 60s that had Louis Dampier and Pat Riley and Larry Conley and those guys. They started 23 and 0 on a season. Good offensive rebound. That's the last thing you want to happen on a missed free throw. Big play right there by Towns. Gets on the board, gets a hug from his teammates. These kids, the one thing about Kentucky players, they're so unselfish. They're all about winning. Here comes a big offensive rebound, and there's the score inside. Starting to get away from him now, Tennessee. Yep. It's up for 11. And Towns he hasn't been a big force offensively, but that three-point play will really make a difference in this game unless Tennessee can find some offense in a hurry now. Pretty tough to hold that talent down for 40 minutes. Yep. It's a couple of minutes spurt. I thought the play by Harrison stepping in the pass lane was a backbreaker. Richardson again has had a really tough night scoring. Well, we talked about it on top of the show. For them to really pull an upset, the three ball would have to go down. They've had five games this year where they've made at least a minimum of 10 threes. They made 13 against Tennessee State, 10 against North Carolina State. 
10 against Missouri State, 11 against Texas A&M. There goes another three, but it didn't go in again. 10 against South Carolina, they're two for 15 tonight. And they're saying Kentucky, whether or not Bachman touched it or not, it's going back to Tennessee. Certainly not a great performance by Kentucky, but certainly enough to have them right now in command. Very difficult to get your kids to play a razor shot every night. Every yeah. night. There's a block shot. Matt Towns, who leads the team in blocks, second in the SEC. Oh, get down, get down. He likes playing for that big slam. They're looking for a guy coming down the lane for a jam, one of the big guys. Holly Stein did find the handle, and then after the missed shot, a foul on Kentucky as we check in with Seth. Interesting thing about this Kentucky team is every time they're pushed to the wall, whether it was Florida on the road, LSU on the road, what do they do? They stay together, they continue to compete, they execute defensively, and more importantly, they execute offensively. They get the ball in the right guy's hands, making the right play. To me, that's the most impressive thing about Kentucky because with all the pressure, they always respond. I'll tell you one thing more impressive to me, Seth, when you look at Kentucky, is the guy on the sideline who can really have these players buy into his system and understand it's all about the team. They're very unselfish, very unselfish basketball team. Coach, that's the most underrated part of what John Collins has been able to do. People talk about recruiting great players. Well, you know what? It's hard to coach great players, to get guys to trust each other, to play for the good of the group, to play to win and not just play to play. And as you watch this Kentucky team from the Bahamas on, each and every night, they play to play. A different guy each night had eight different leading scores. That's who they are. I tell you one thing, I think a lot of guys like to coach great players, though. I like to have those great players and have that chance. You know, John. Coach, you coached great players at one time in your life. That's a long time ago. I did. I did. Andrew Harrison had a three rim out. There it is. Sick back by Lyles. Talk Kentucky right now. You know, an interesting thing John Calipari's talked about this week a little bit. He says, sometimes my players come to the bench, they do something wrong. I'm trying to teach them what went wrong. And they look up at the scoreboard in this case, and they're up by 14, and they look at me like I'm crazy because he's <laughs> yelling and teaching and coaching, and they're up 14, which he's doing right now. Look at his face. Look at his face, the intensity. And you still, would, they're up 14. You would think they're down 14, <laughs> but that's why he's a winner. They're on a 10-0 run right now to lead by 14, and of course, he's done a great job. We talked about John Wall a little while ago, and you talk about the picks that he's had. DeMarcus Cousin and John Wall and Patrick Patterson in the 2010 draft. Brandon Knight in 2011. Anthony Davis, one of the best players in the NBA right now, along with Michael Gilchrist. Nerlens Noel, who got hurt his one year, and then Julius Randle, seventh pick last year. And that's John Calipari, 2009 to present, where he's 177 and 37. And he is 50 and 4 when his team at Kentucky is the number one team in the country. Well, they're about to become 51 and 4. You know, Jerry Tipton asked me before the game, he said, why is he able to be so successful? What is his greatest strength? To me, it's his communication ability, especially with young athletes. They believe in him, they trust him, and they look at the long list that he can point out where they've gone after wearing a Kentucky uniform and where they are today. When you look at that list, so impressive. And I'll tell you one thing, he's more than a recruiter. The guy can teach, he can coach, and he can manage a quality. There's about nine guys on this team that want to be the next John Wall, DeMarcus Cousin, whatever that list we just showed you. And timeout taken by Kentucky as they got it in to the front court. Well, who's got a chance to beat him? When you look at what's coming up, they got Auburn Saturday, 7 o'clock on ESPN. Go on the road at Mississippi State. And then it's Arkansas. There's the other top 25 team from the SEC. That will be at Rough, though, on February 28th. Georgia, I think, the first time they played them at Rough matches up decently with them. That's on a Super Tuesday on March 3rd. And then Florida wraps it up the following Saturday before we hit Nashville and the SEC tournament. I think when they played Georgia, Georgia was out, was out for it. Right. And the percentage of chance to win, well, our experts back in Bristol say that it's Georgia, 86% chance that they're going to beat them. But that means Georgia's got a 14% chance to win. And Seth, what do you think?
Well, you know, they are to the upset. What do you have to do? You got to control the tempo and the rhythm of the game. The tempo of the game with your offense, the rhythm of the game with your defense. When I think about Arkansas, the way they extend their defense, the way they can turn you over, where they tack in transition. They're also a terrific passing team and can make threes. To me, if there's one team that might be up to get this team, it would be an Arkansas team that can press, zone them up, but also has the offensive skill and a go-to player in Bobby Portis that can put pressure on those Kentucky Bates. Yeah, Portis can really put pressure on. He's a big-time inside force. And unlike some other years, Arkansas has found a way now to win on the road. And that's something that has been a stickler for them. They could win at Bud Walton Arena, but they couldn't win on the road. And uh, they've proven that to be not the case this year. So there's a chance, maybe. We're under four minutes, and it's Kentucky by 12. Tell you, everybody we've been talking this team, that team. All I know is they're going to have a great chance to leave it here 26 and zip. I'd say there's a 100% chance of that. I don't have to be one of those guys that's counting numbers back in our research department. <laughs> But Tennessee's not giving up, and they're hanging in there. And a foul underneath will be on Lyles with 3.38 to go. Tennessee will be going to the free throw line. When we come back, they trail by a dozen. Kentucky by 12 with 3.38 remaining in the ballgame as we take a look at tonight's amazing play. Brought to you by Quicken Loans. I don't know if there's a seven-footer that runs the floor any better in the country than this guy. Harley Stein on a breakaway and the jam. It seems like he's had a big one like that in just about every game this year for Kentucky. He's one of the 20 finalists for the Wooden Award and well-deserved. And if uh, they didn't play two platoons, you wonder what his numbers would be. He's 11th right now in the rebounding in the conference, just under 10 points a game. And he and actually Carl Anthony Townsend here tied in the rebounding department. So those two big guys and you and Seth were talking about it, just too much right. for a team like Tennessee that doesn't have a lot of that. Well, especially when they're not making a three and a two for 16, shooting a three ball. You know, you talk about balance, look at Kentucky. Seven players average between 7.3 and 11.1 a game. And that's one of their great strengths. They're not worried about stats. They're not worried about stats at all. They're worried about one stat. Be a winner, and they leave probably here tonight in another game. Eight different players have led this team in scoring, so they can really mix it up and have all season long and route to what is going to be a 26 and 0 start in the next three and a half minutes. And the Tennessee give them credit. I think they're going to win the rebounding battle tonight. Maybe seven of the last eight games, the team that won the rebounding advantage won the ball game between these two clubs, with the exception of last year when Tennessee lost at Rupp. I think they're going to have more boards tonight, but I don't think it's going to matter. They've done everything they wanted to do here in terms of effort and their matchup defense. They shot the ball well in the first half. Second half, they're shooting about 25% after 54% in the first half. So Kentucky made some adjustments defensively, but they just have not made I hate to keep harping on it, but it's a fact of life. You can't hide the number making threes. They did not make them. They're two out of 17 right now from outside the arc. Armani Moore is going to step up to the free throw line. Five points for Amani. One and one here. He's playing very hard, physical. Gives up a lot of size on the inside. And again, between missing threes and missing free throws, you don't give yourself a chance against Kentucky. So right now, the Cats on the floor at Dakari Johnson, Willie Collie Stein, Booker. Tyler Eulis and the guy that's running the show right now is Andrew Harrison at the point. They spread the floor, looking for high percentage shots right here. In total command. Harrison fouled on the inside. Might be on more, and if it is, he's gone. Although there were two volunteers there. And they're going to call that one on Carmichael. And that's five on him as well. He's on the journey to the tourney presented by Sonic. Part of Wednesday Night Hoops presented by PNC. 2015 edition of... Probably the best rivalry in college basketball ever. Number 15, North Carolina takes on number four, Duke. It's tomorrow night, 9 o'clock on ESPN for the rivalry week presented by Wendy's. And first take will be there. Sports Center will be there. We'll have an entire ESPN contingent on hand for that matchup between Carolina and Duke. Certainly will be a very special game again. North Carolina coming in after a loss to Pittsburgh. Duke has had some great road wins. You think about road wins. They beat Virginia at Virginia. They beat Wisconsin at Wisconsin. They beat Louisville at Louisville. Those are major, major road wins. 
Andrew Harrison. Andrew Harrison's first trip to the free throw line tonight. When I think of Carolina Duke this year, the question for Carolina right now is how are they going to defend Jaleel Okafor? Are they going to double him? Are they going to play him straight up? And then in the backcourt, the preseason, Marcus Page was the preseason player of the year in the ACC. Right now, Quinn Cook is probably playing as well as any guard in the ACC with Okafor or Jaron Grant as maybe the player of the year. But this basketball game is going to come down to no one particular thing. Coach Vitale, you've called him forever and ever. It, expect the unexpected. Carolina had a tough loss the other day. They will bounce back. Duke right now, they're a basketball team that seems like it's really connected offensively and defensively. Well, you know, if you double up on Okafor, people try that. He gets the ball back out, finds the open guy, and they got guys on the perimeter can shoot. And the one thing about Tyus Jones, he really plays on a different level against elite teams in a big moment. And he's been special. I don't think their backcourt gets enough recognition that they deserve when you talk about Cook and Jones. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. Everyone thought, talked about Cook playing off the ball with Tyus Jones. Can the two small guards coexist? And it's been a brilliant move by Coach K because not only have they coexisted, but by having two ball handlers that can't be pressed. And Cook is really a natural two guard, and he gets out in transition, gets much, many more room and rhythm threes of kickouts and kick aheads than he would have if the ball was in his hands. And Seth, one thing they both do really well. They're like one man at the free throw line. Jones and Cook late in the game. Page is going to have to have a phenomenal game for them to win. Speaking of free throw line, Josh Richardson came into this game having hit 24 of his last 28 free throws, and he's one for three tonight. So it has not been his night. Tennessee's leading scorer, and that's been part of the problem for this club tonight. That had a chance, and now they trail by 14. I'll tell you one thing. You know, you're going to see them number in the paper and people can think it's blowout city i mean with 30 minutes to go 30 minutes gone in this game it was anybody's game yep big blue nation their fans travel it would have been a lot more here if the weather conditions were better but they do travel there's a lot of blue in the house some of the orange is filtering out but uh they gave it their all tonight for the volunteers here on the home floor yeah, they played really hard. They played hard. They executed. They just could not finish from the three-point line. Andrew Harrison with another 14-point night right now. And the lead stretched to 16. Kentucky to me got a big lift from Ulysses and Booker there in the first half when Tennessee was really playing well. Final two minutes as Richardson drives in and one of his best moves to the rack. Josh gets his 10th point. Slashing, driving, layup. Very tough to get open looks with their great size. That was a tough shot he just converted. This is a methodical performance by Kentucky. Good enough to achieve what they want. They want to leave here with a W, and that's what they came for, and that's what they're going to get. And a shot and a great pass inside to Lyles. He's an outstanding high school player in Indiana. Everybody here is outstanding high school yeah. <laughs> They're all players of the year. They're all McDonald's. They're all Americans. Here's a pull up. And snapping down the rebound is Booker. Booker not only has done a nice job with 18 points, but he's done a nice job on the glass with six rebounds. Yeah, you really address him on the offense glass. I think it's going to be really important watching Kentucky now as they get ready to run out and finish the season. What he does with his rotation as he gets to the SEC. I think what really amazed me, Brad, and you know it a little better than I do because you've been there with the SEC. I've been in the ACC as he tips that in. Lyles, they have not won the SEC tournament the last three years. That's right. Florida last year, Ole Miss the year before. Again, we're down to 40 seconds. And Moore has it stripped by Harrison. And the big blue nation that is here with a standing ovation now on the opponent's floor as there's virtually no difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Andrew Harrison will just dribble this out. And history made tonight for the Kentucky Wildcats. Never in their illustrious basketball history have they ever started a season 26 and 0 they have now and they win by 18 
It was a little struggle, but they came up and made big plays. Another good, solid performance by the Kentucky Wildcats, the number one team in the USA. So there's .6 seconds remaining, so there'll be a pass inbounded here by Tennessee, and it will be over, 66 to 48. And again, perfect in conference at 13 and 0. The two coaches going to talk it over there while they inbound the ball, just to make it official. And John Calipari goes to 51 and 4 when his team's the number one team in the country. <laughs> and Auburn's up next, 7 o'clock Saturday night on ESPN. So the 218th edition of this rivalry between the Volunteers and the Kentucky Wildcats for the first half was excellent. It was 35 to 31 at halftime, and that's after Kentucky won on a little bit of a run to overcome a three-point deficit as Tennessee had the lead late in the first half. Seth Greenberg with the winning coach. Seth. Cal, Carl Anthony picks up two fouls early. How do you think your team responded? I was really disappointed because they were obvious fouls. You push a guy to rebound? Are you kidding me? And you are back away from a shooter and you go out and foul? I mean, we just can't have that kind of play. I mean, that's stuff that, come on now, you got to be better. Now he came back in the second half and he rebounded and he played and he did what we need him to do. But he can't do that to his teammates. I mean, those were like... You did him. I couldn't even argue. I want to yell, but I couldn't. You tried, though. I did. <laughs> what did you learn about your team when he was off the floor for that extended period of time? Well, I like Trey at some four. You know, we did a little bit of that. Willie did some good stuff. Uh, my, my thing with Andrew is, if you're not in an attack mode, I'm taking you out. But when he's in an attack mode, we are, and we're really good that way. And you look at him when he gets in the lane, the passes he throws, the baskets he's made. It just sometimes he tries, to, he's passing. I'm saying, go, man. There's nothing holding you back. Attack. Tyler and Devin in the first half, I thought they took over to an extent. What did you tell them without Carl in the game? No, I thought we, we first of all, you won't believe this, but we shot too many threes to start the game. <laughs> and then to start the second half, we threw, shoot five threes. We were going to post it. Now, that tells you they don't listen to me all the time. But, again, we fought through it, and... Uh, we, it was like we fought a little bit of the intensity stuff today. Great. Thanks, Cal. Good Thanks. luck, man. Well, still never on, pleased with an 18-point win. They got to be better. They're pretty good. They're number one.